Hi, my name's Mark. I am from G-Code's Tutor. So I'm here today to talk a little bit about the history of G-Code, how it fits into the timeline of other programming languages, and also a brief look at the future possibilities of our favorite programming language. So the first high level programming language was called Placknell. Now this was created by Konrad Zuse between 1942 and 1945. And his work mostly went unnoted at the time by the United Kingdom and America because of the war. So they didn't know at the time what he was up to. And this was a massive breakthrough because this was the first high level programming language. Now, a high-level programming language is a language that humans can write and read and understand, whereas a low-level programming language is converted from a high level, and it's basically noughts and ones that the computer processor can understand. So all programming languages tend to be high-level that we speak about, and then the computer converts it into a low-level language that the computer chips can, can read. So this was back in 1942 to 1945. Now, fast forwarding a little bit to 1957, John Bacchus, uh, he invented Fortran, which is short for formula translation. Now, this is possibly the oldest programming language that we still use today, and it's designed to do complex statistical, mathematical, and scientific work. Now, why this is relevant is because G-code was invented around 1958, somewhere between 1958 and 1961, the official uh, documents say, but we know that MIT was using it and experimenting with it in 1958. So this is important when we look at all the programming languages put together around that time as they were invented. Because we start off with 1951 here on this example with a regional assembly language. And as we go through, we can see Fontran that we just spoke about coming out in 1957. And it's come with the first compiler, so it can convert it into a low-level programming language. Now, this was also around about the same time Lisp was invented, which is another famous language. But G-Code actually came in around this time. So it was right there during the forefront of these programming languages. As this new invention of programming started to come around, G-Code was right there at the beginning. So this makes G-Code one of the earliest languages that we still use. So the formal name of G-Code is RS274. And it's been revised on its final revision in February 1998. And it's now known as RS274D. And the current ISO standard is ISO 6983. And this has just been recently reviewed this year. So this is the current ISO standard. So this standard is what the machine manufacturers work with. And then they add their own twist to things to make it run certain features on the machine that they may need. So although that's the basic standard version of G-code, machine manufacturers add to it as they see fit. Now we can't really talk about the history of G-code without mentioning standard Gerber. Now this was a numerical control format that was used to control plotters back in the PCB industry in the 1960s. And this branch was revoked by its developer in 2014 as it was obsolete in 1998. Now, during the 70s through the 90s, many CNC machine tool builders attempted to overcome the capacity difficulties by standardizing on different machine controllers built by FANUC. In 2010s, controller differences and incompatibility are not as troublesome because machines operate using CAD CAM. Now, the modern CAD CAM machines can post to any, any uh, version of G-code. So this means no matter the differences on your machines, what different G codes the manufacturers added to it, the CAD CAM would post to that actual machine. So it would deal with the variances that the machine manufacturers have added to the programs over the years. So when G code began, it was very limited. It didn't have the option to use variables, loops, conditional operators, and what we know as macro programming today. So over the years, these has been added to the FANUC systems, and now we get a lot more robust programming language that acts like a proper programming language because we can manipulate variables and we can use if and statements, etc. And the more modern machines now use closed loop systems. So in the early days, we had open loop systems where the machine would tell the slides to move, say, for example, one inch. It would move what it thought was an inch, and that would be the end of it. 
But now it would tell the machine to move one inch and the machine would measure its movement using a scale. And if it sees it arrive at exactly one inch, it would tell the controller we're there to stop moving. So it's a closed loop system, so it's a lot more accurate now when we're using G-code to control the slides of the machines in the axes. So extensions and variations to G-code has happened independently by machine manufacturers over the years. So now we're left with lots of different versions of G-code, and that's why we have different post processors for our CAD CAM software, so it can output to these different versions. But as a G-code programmer, it doesn't make that much difference. We just need to have a quick flick through the manuals, maybe look at some programs written on that machine, and we can familiarize ourselves with the differences that's been added with the new machine that we're about to run with G-code. So it only takes a day or two really to familiarize ourselves with the new branch of G-code that we may be programming with that machine. So G-code originally wasn't intended to work on three or five axis machines. It was intended to use on plotters that only uses X and Y axes. So what does the future hold for G-code? Well, our CAD CAM software outputs to G-code and for more simpler work such as one-offs and some lathe work, it's often a lot quicker to program manually G-code by hand because we can use cycles to shorten the amount of code we have to write. And recently we've seen 3D printers become very popular and they also use G-code to control their axes of movement. So G-code is a language, I can't see it going anywhere for a very long time. Our CAD CAM software may help replace the front end to it, but we still need to pop in and change speeds and feeds and maybe write short programs. That's a lot quicker by writing by hand sometimes than it would be by making a CAD model and producing that. So that is my very brief history of G-code.